Hi, and g'day again. Today we're going to be having a look at process order and sequence in graphical organizers. Let me just crack out my uh, pen that I can be used today to draw on the screen. For this one, you can use all the processes on large bits of paper, like the butcher's paper. You can get them to do it on lined paper in little groups. You can get them to use it in the large whiteboards that you might have in the classroom. You might even get them to, say, do it on the computer screens and draw directly on some of these and make them into their own sort of living, breathing e-learning they can share with others. For each of the topics, it's pretty good to get into for science, maths, computer science, and with SOS, and I'll explain to them how they sort of impact in each part. I'll get right into this one here. And this is like a sequence chart to see how it goes through. So they might start with the big idea or the formula at the start, and then go on to stage number two and down to three and so on all the way around until I get to the final result at the end. You might start with all the chemical reactions that are needed and the stages that it gets through until you get the final solution. You might start with a history event or a date and they flow through each of the orders to get to the final event that occurs. You could even start with this is the formula and then finally get down to how it's graphed at the end and this is the chart that we're going to show in maths or science. This is where I'm trying to push the lower order thinking so they can recall each of the stages and work through sort of a logical sequence of events in their minds. So push the students onto the next level. Oops, press the wrong one there. Try to push them into, say, changing the actual events in their occurrence. So if we start with the same beginning in both examples, if I put three into the second step, will that cause the second one to occur? Or will it cause it to automatically jump onto five? or possibly jump onto number four. Does this diminish the value of the second stage? If this historical event hadn't occurred, would this have mean it would have gone straight to five? And the students can then judge the situation and say, maybe it could have, maybe it may not have. If I take this step out of the chemical equation or the reactions, will it cause it to still happen anyway? If I look at this in a comp science sense, if I remove a line of code, what will the computer then do? May it then jump onto stage number seven, ignoring the rest of the steps? Here, the students can start making some value judgments based off the sequences when they're moved in a different order. In Doll 4, this is systems analysis. If I mess with the system, does the final outcome that we hoped to achieve, or the historical event that did occur, would it still actually occur? This is great for group learning. They can start to debate and discuss them out. It's great for TOK, and they can start saying, how do I know what I know based off the steps? Maybe what I know has changed as a result of the sequences being put out of order. I like to really jumble them around. What if I stuck seven in number three? What if I stuck number eight in this part here? Would that dramatically change the outcome? Would that cause the historical event to be sped up or expedited much quicker than it was planned and processed at the very start? I think you can see lots of applications that comes together, but it's the idea of changing the events. Does that cause the expected outcome still to occur, or would some of the stages drop out altogether? There's lots of good questions there. Let's jump onto the next one, eh? Here, I'm following the same sort of thing, but I'm trying to find this really sort of logical stack. I really want events to go down in this sort of process so the mind can go ding, 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 ding as it flows through. It's great for math, science, comp, and SOS, because beforehand in the previous graph there was sort of this chain events. I want that brain to stop thinking this sort of process, but to really think stack as it's going down, just to get the brain to think in a slightly different way. I push the lower order stuff, just put the actual names into each of the things, the formulas, the chemical equations that are required, the historical events that may occur. How I challenge them onto the next part is to really start thinking about how they rank in importance. So is step one really the number one rank? Or is it number two is actually the most important stage? Or is number three the most important stage that really makes it come together? The tricky part to really push the mind and to justify their position is the evidence. What factual parts can they back up with it? I try to move beyond just the evaluative sort of normative statements, how this came about. What's the facts that can show that I ranked this one more highly than the other. The prioritizing in the mind and the debate that allows to occur amongst groups can really push the mind to expand in different levels. 
This can be great for, say, persuasive speeches. This can be great for judging to see if historical events were actually that was the biggest trigger that caused the third and fourth step to occur. Or maybe it was the final step that was the most important. Out of each of these bits, if students can support their position through as much factual evidence, say from the case study, or from what's observations around them, or from mathematical logical processes, it can help the mind, uh, the mind sort of solidify down to a really solid point, and they can understand why, through process, step number five may have been the most important and more, more important than step number three. It's a good challenge for the mind. Let's go to the next one. On this one, it's the same sort of approach. We can ask them to recall, but I want to start thinking about what equipment is actually needed. Pencil, ruler, calculator, test tubes, stethoscope, these chemicals, tanks, artillery, planes. Um, do I actually have to have Wi-Fi in order to make this work? Can I just run it through an intranet? Can I run it through network cables? There's many sort of applications. I might even alternately tie it around to say a theory. In step one you need this theory. In step two you have this theory. In step three you have this theory. You could even need to change them. Maybe step one has this equipment in theory and step two just has this equipment and it flows on. It's trying to attach the mind to the stages and they're thinking about what's needed in order to make the next step occur. The way I try to push this into higher order thinking is I get them to do one of these sort of five W's plus the one H sort of process. Please ignore the dodgy nature of my handwriting. I'm using a mouse to make it all work. But pushing the idea maybe in group discussion or individual thinking about who was actually there in step one what actually occurred, when did it occur, where did it occur, why and then how, can help the mind start to think, well, if I change the location, would that actually cause step two to be different? Or the next required equipment to be different? If I changed when it happened, so if it happened in colonial times rather than um, modern day times, would this have caused a different outcome? I'm a big fan of the how part, the process part. If how they came about because they used the equipment in a different way, say with skilled labour versus non-skilled labour, or patriots versus the freedom fighters, would it have actually caused the outcome and the final step five, whatever solution that may have been, to be very different? This is particularly great in group discussions. Of course, if you want to follow in the steps, you then have the next one down for step two, and step three, and step four, and step five. And it's a great way of just starting discussions between students to get them to think about what had happened. We'll go on to the last one. And this one here I call sort of like the scenario training. The big push that I've got is I try to think about sort of the cyclical approach. Why does it go round in its revolution and its stages? So not just going down in sort of a stack to get to the end, why does it actually continue back to stage one? So they can think about that sort of continual process. I push students for the recall, can you think of what the stages are? If they can get those in order and sequence, then I start pushing them into this sort of scenario. If I put the scenario in the middle, what I'd like you to do is start prioritizing what must happen first in order for stage two to happen. In maths, what must actually be applied through some rules in order for the second stage to occur? Derivatives, expanding out brackets, those kind of things regression analysis. In science, maybe when they're doing experiments or in biology, what must actually happen first in order for the cells to expand or divide or contract? What must actually fir happen first and then second to get the chemical reaction to actually occur? By prioritizing their ideas and writing them down, it helps open up debate amongst the students about what they think is the most important stage for the second and third steps to roll around. The critical part here is to make them always think about it has to come back to stage one. If I change the prioritizing, would that mainly cross out the link and it wouldn't actually get back to stage one at all. It may only just sort of go on a stack flow of just one, two, three, four, but it wouldn't return. It's a great way for the mind to think about how does it all connect together, but then how does it also repeat. This is sort of the doll four with that systems analysis again. Why do things repeat and go in revolutions and circles? Of course, again, you can reply it again to history. Why does history keep repeating itself? These are just a couple of ideas to think about with graphical organizers and how to go from that sort of lower order thinking into the higher order thinking 
and doing it through maybe the whiteboard, bits of paper, butcher's paper, or even just group discussion, they can make some notes on the side. I hope this has been of use to you today, and I'll see you again in another video.